Time-hopping cops with a budget that only lets them travel to the 80s? A cyborg satire watered down for mass consumption? The movies are classics. The TV spin-offs flopped hard. A surprise success, Alien Nation hit the big screen in 1988, with a story set three years after an alien race called the Newcomers arrive on Earth and integrate into human society. James Kahn stars as Detective Matt Sykes, who's partnered with newcomer Detective San Francisco, played by Mandy Patinkin, to hunt down a killer on the loose. A mix of crime noir, science fiction, and buddy cop tropes, the film yielded a TV spin-off one year later. This new version, as reimagined by series creator Kenneth Johnson, is less a buddy cop action series and more of a gritty cop drama that explores real issues. In an interview with Games Radar, Johnson said that he wanted to use the science fiction elements of the film to examine social and political problems and racial politics. On top of the police stories, the series put a focus on the problems of bigotry faced by Francisco's alien family as they integrate into Earth culture. The series garnered mixed reviews upon release, and ratings at the time weren't strong enough to keep it afloat, leading to cancellation after just 22 episodes. Thankfully, perhaps due to the success of The X-Files later that decade, Fox was able to resurrect Alien Nation as a series of five television movies, with its final entry landing in 1997. See, I haven't gone completely human. <laughs> yeah, Dad, it looks good. Logan's Run established itself as a groundbreaking sci-fi adventure film when it premiered in 1976. The film stars Michael York, who more modern audiences might know as Basil Exposition from the cast of the Austin Powers movies. The story is set in a bizarre future world where the government controls its resources by executing citizens when they turn 30. Logan Five, aka York, is a former government enforcer who begins to challenge the system when he meets a young woman named Jessica Six. Together, the pair go on the run through post-apocalyptic America in search of Sanctuary, a legendary utopia where they believe they can live out the rest of their natural lives. Just a year after the film was released, a television adaptation arrived with a new cast, serving as a retelling and continuation of the story. The show chronicles much more of the characters' turbulent escape to the mythical city of Sanctuary and gives them a robot sidekick named Rem. Along their travels, Logan and Jessica encounter aliens, monsters, and robots as well as other runners, rebels, and new cities. They have adventures in dreams and even do a bit of time traveling. An ambitious series that may have bitten off a bit more than it could chew, Logan's run couldn't keep up with other science fiction tales of the era. It lasted less than a year and completed just 14 episodes before being cancelled. While HBO's Westworld reboot series is the franchise's most popular entry today, it's originally based on a 1973 science fiction film of the same name written by Jurassic Park author Michael Crichton. The movie even received a sequel in 1976 called Future World. But what's really talked about is a spin-off television series broadcast later that same year, Beyond Westworld. Where the film sees malfunctions lead to disaster in the titular android theme park, the series took a new angle. Beyond Westworld features a recurring villain, the sinister Simon Quaid, who's stolen androids from the park for his own nefarious purposes. Security chief John Moore, played by Jim McCullen, sets out to capture a new android replicant each week. A promising premise, it may have been a little ahead of its time, and it never quite took off. The fact that only five episodes were ever produced may account for why the series has faded into obscurity. Based on the Philip K. Dick short story, We Can Remember It For You Wholesale, the big-budget 1990 sci-fi film Total Recall is an over-the-top action-adventure led by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger stars as Douglas Quaid, a construction worker who opts to have memory implants of an exotic secret agent life as part of a virtual vacation package. But the procedure goes wrong, and Quaid soon discovers that he may be an undercover agent for real, sending him on a mission to Mars. See you at the party, Richter! A TV spin-off titled Total Recall 2070 launched on Showtime in 1997. Despite its title, Total Recall 2070 acts more like a spin-off of a different iconic sci-fi film, the 1982 classic Blade Runner. In the series, we meet Michael Easton's detective David Hume of the Citizens Protection Bureau, who's reluctantly paired with a synthetic partner in the straight-laced replicant Ian Favre, played by Carl Pruner. The mismatched cops are tasked with investigating all manner of crimes in the city, many of which involve the Consortium, a group of powerful mega-corporations that includes virtual vacation agency Recall. Another ambitious series, Total Recall 2070, works pretty well at times as a cyberpunk detective series, but with a high budget and low viewership, the network dropped it after a single season. 
considered it a divorce. In 1968, Charlton Heston's Planet of the Apes became a huge hit, telling the upside-down story of an astronaut who lands on a world where apes rule and humans are slaves. With its shocking twist ending, it became a cultural phenomenon, and the studio rushed a sequel into production. Between 1970 and 1973, there were four more entries in the series. But with box office results dwindling, the franchise tried a different approach with a primetime network television spin-off. Debuting in 1974, the Planet of the Apes television series takes place some decades after the events of the films, when another team of 20th century astronauts crash land on the world ruled by apes. It sees the return of the film star Roddy McDowell, but in a new role, that of Galen, a young and curious chimpanzee who begins to question the origins of his people and is sentenced to death for heresy. After Galen is rescued by two of the astronauts, the trio escape the city and crisscross the landscape, having weekly adventures fighting ape oppressors. Despite the popularity of the films, the TV version of Planet of the Apes couldn't find much success, and it was canned after just four months and 14 episodes. The network would try again a year later with an animated adaptation, which didn't fare much better. What a thick-brained lout that General Urko is. Based on the short story by Philip K. Dick, the 2002 action blockbuster Minority Report from director Steven Spielberg stars Tom Cruise, Colin Farrell, and Samantha Morton. In the film's future world, violent crime is eliminated through the use of telepathic people called precogs who can see into the future. But when pre-crime officer John Anderton discovers he's been identified as a future killer, he goes on the run and helps upend the entire system, freeing the precogs from forced servitude. A television spin-off arrived more than a decade later in 2015. Set after the game-changing events of the film, the series stars Stark Sands as Dash, one of the precogs who's been released, but who remains haunted by visions of future murders. With a new status quo, Dash teams up with a metropolitan police detective and tries to help her prevent murders with his unique abilities. At the same time, dark forces seek to track Dash down and use his powers for their own ends. Where the film excels with a unique futuristic vision, exhilarating action, and a captivating mystery, the spin-off TV series is lackluster and pedestrian. An ordinary sci-fi procedural, it failed to live up to the film and got low ratings, leading to Fox cutting the show short at just 10 episodes before closing its doors for good. The 1994 Jean-Claude Van Damme movie Time Cop is a sci-fi adventure that follows Max Walker an agent of the Time Enforcement Commission, which tracks time-traveling criminals. When Walker goes back in time to stop a killer, he uncovers evidence that a powerful political figure has been using the government's temporal technology to reshape the future into his own dark design. Based on a comic book of the same name, Time Cop was a surprise hit in 1994, and a few years later, a television spin-off came to fruition. With a premise tailor-made for weekly adventures, the small-screen adaptation follows the exploits of Officer Jack Logan, played by Ted King, who goes back in time in each episode to stop a criminal in the past. Unfortunately, the series was dragged down by a lack of ambition and a lower budget that limited the scope to relatively modern settings. Well, the Senate thinks if we spent more time in the present tracking down rogue sleds, fewer criminals would get back, we'd cut our budget by a third. Beyond its inability to dream big, the Time Cop show was simply cheap-looking, poorly produced, and often just plain boring. In the end, just nine episodes were aired. The fact that nobody really remembers this one is sadly no surprise. In 1984, director John Carpenter helmed a thoughtful and romantic science fiction drama called Starman. The film stars Jeff Bridges as an alien entity who's stranded on Earth and befriends a young woman named Jenny, played by Karen Allen. The alien is also wearing a body that resembles her dead husband. While the two fall in love, Starman searches for a way to return to his home. Bridges received an Oscar nomination for Best Actor, and a TV spin-off arrived two years later. Set more than a decade after the film, Starman the series sees the alien being returned to find the child he fathered with Jenny. Taking the shape of photojournalist Paul Forrester, played by Robert Hayes, he reconnects with his now teenage son, and each week the alien and his human child set out to find his missing mother. At the same time, they must also outrun the government forces who are hunting them, including a determined investigator who believes them to be a danger. Focusing on the father and son relationship, Starman the series loses the romance of the film exchanging it for a kid-friendly adventure. Ultimately, it wasn't enough, lasting just one season and being all but forgotten today. We're gone. We're history. Paul Verhoeven's 1987 hit Robocop is a sci-fi classic with a dystopian view of the future that feels eerily prescient today. Packed with social allegory that touches on corporate greed, class inequality, 
and the militarization of law enforcement, RoboCop is much more than a thrilling sci-fi action adventure. The film stars Peter Weller as Alex Murphy, a cop who's critically wounded in the line of duty and turned into a cyborg as part of a new police program. RoboCop was one of the best action movies of the decade. Your move, creep. A pair of big screen sequels followed in 1990 and 1993, and a live action TV spin off landed a year later. With a fairly sizable budget for its day, the series looked pretty good at the time. While the creators returned Robocop to its roots with plenty of social commentary, being confined to television meant ditching the ultra violence of the films, which turned off some fans. However, the addition of Murphy's parents expanded the character's story, and the return of the classic satirical commercials was a highlight as well. Be a superhero! Be a super shopper! Disappointing ratings saw the network fail to renew this series for a second season. Though producers tried another live-action reboot a few years later in 2001 with the TV miniseries Prime Directives. The sci-fi comedy Weird Science was written and directed by John Hughes, whose string of teen comedies made him an 80s legend. The film starred Anthony Michael Hall and Ian Michael Smith as Gary and Wyatt, a pair of high school geeks who use their computer to engineer the perfect woman, played by model Kelly LeBrock. After creating their dream girl, the much older Lisa, the two nerdy teens get into a series of comical misadventures and wacky hijinks. Lisa uses her own magical powers to help them deal with their problems in life and love. Bill Paxton and Robert Downey Jr. also star. Now I want you to promise that you'll keep your big mouth shut about everything that has happened here this weekend. A decade after the movie, a TV series arrived, retelling the events of the film and giving viewers weekly adventures of Gary, Wyatt, and Lisa. Playing up Lisa's magical powers, the series made the character into more of a genie who could grant wishes, rather than a protective helper to the two boys. But thanks to its status as a cable network original, the series could venture into more risque territory just like the film. Never a major hit, the series received mixed reviews, but this was no single season flop. In fact, the show ran for five seasons between the USA Network and Sci-Fi. Despite its 88-episode run, however, Weird Science isn't talked about much these days.